All right, we're, we're live. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to the Beefy Boys Bud Club podcast. I am Christian, and I am joined here with my buds, Vito. Yo, what's up? And Joe. Hey, hey. And um, today I'm going to be a little bit uh, on the on the frownier side of town since the Seahawks couldn't punch their fucking ticket to the to the playoffs are and you, they had to are, fuck around. Are you a sad panda? Very sad panda. We're going to have a little bit of a slow roll in uh, Beefy Boys podcast today. Exactly. <laughs> I'm rolling in here with more the Seahawks sweatpants and the Bruce Irvin jersey looking like a fucking idiot because the Seahawks, uh, boy, they couldn't get it done in San Francisco. But... You know, it's interesting that we're talking about that game because, you know, I, I just went on, you know, a small little vacation over the weekend to kind of clear my mind, right? Clear my mind, have a good time, get away from work, spend time with my girlfriend. Seahawks Whoa. were on my mind the entire time. Huh? And the biggest That's thing super about fan, that, man. <laughs> biggest thing about that was I was the only one out of like a little family vacation trip that we had. I was the only one that had the idea that the Seahawks were going to overlook the 49ers and fucking lose this game. Trap now, game, they call it. Trap them. game, yeah. big time. And, you know, when I said that, everybody, of course, you know, oh, it's the 49ers. It's an easy fucking win. They, you know, they suck. 49ers suck. Mind you, let me just go, I mean, let me just go over Nick Mullen's numbers with you guys real quick. So, Vito, these numbers here from this quarterback, this is a third string quarterback, all right? So their their multi million dollar man went down. What is a third string quarterback? Third if string I can if I can boot in here, I don't know if you boys know this, but I, I write the descriptions for the podcast, and every week there's a we explain blank to Vito. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <So, laughs> carry on. As the podcast continues, Vito <laughs> grows his knowledge in football. Yeah. yeah. So now the so third string quarterback oh is going to be your. What's we, up? We, we should have a meter of, like, football knowledge. Vito's, <laughs> Vito's football knowledge, and it goes we'll up by, like, a, a percent every... We'll give you a test one of these days. <laughs> uh, test your knowledge. <laughs> so, third-string quarterback. So that means they have a starter, right? And that's, like, their big man. You know, they just signed Jimmy Garoppolo, which is, a you know, in their eyes, a big-time quarterback, even though he hasn't done anything special. But they paid him in the hundreds of millions... He's their guy. A.K.A. Jimmy G, A.K.A. Jimmy Jesus, A.K.A. Jimmy GQ. Yes. Anyway. Goes to Kansas Hashtag. City and his kneecap explodes. Sadly. It's a bummer. It Hashtag. sucks. Hashtag. But <laughs> then, they go to, then they go to their second stringer. And for the life of me, I cannot remember. C.J. Bethard. Thank you. He goes out. So then they bring in this guy, Nick Mullins. Comes out of nowhere. <clears throat> this guy's out here playing like fucking the apostle, dude. This guy is balling on him. So, Sunday, the 2nd, December 2nd. Now, CenturyLink is a spooky place to play in December. Every team knows that. The it's home crowd loud. knows yeah. that. It gets fucking loud. It's louder than any other month in the season. Just because playoffs are coming up. The team starts to click really well in December. So, they come in here. Third string quarterback, never played in CenturyLink before. Throws for 414 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Granted, that game was a blowout on the Seahawks' end. So the Seahawks blew them out. Can you but win by like was, 20 points? <laughs> yeah, but that was the start of something that was the reason why we lost today, right? It, it was a trend. His, his yards kept trending. So then you go to the next week. So then they played Denver Broncos, and their, their defense is a – you know, a quarterback attacking machine. They got Von Miller, and he's one of the best linebackers in the league. And so even with all the, the harassment and the and the sacks and the getting hit, he threw for 332 yards on them. Two touchdowns, one interception, and they won that game. So when I saw that they won the game, I knew that Nick Mullen's trend was going to continue. And the biggest reason why it was going to continue is because of their fucking tight end, Jo, uh, George Kittle, woo, woo. and I mean, you know, Joe, you're familiar with with the way that yeah. George Kittle plays. He's on my fantasy team. Two hundred and ten yeah. yards last week. Two hundred and ten <laughs> yards from a fucking tight end. It's it's unbelievable. Most of them in the first half too. What's a tight end? A tight <laughs> end is a a tight end is like your your beefy receiver. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, as a, I mean, the best way to describe it is he's your beefy receiver. He's your guy that he can go down the field and make the catch. He can he has some wheels, but he can also block and protect. Uh-huh. So he can block for run so plays. He, he protect. He, he attack, protect. He he catch the so, ball. So you know from you're large, familiar. Are, are you familiar <laughs> with an offensive line? So yeah. you have your quarterback. He stands behind these five big fat guys. They're the offensive line, and then right next to them on the end of the line is where the tight end stands and he's allowed to catch passes those other five guys can't even move past the line of scrimmage on a pass play he can he's on the end of the line hence the tight end yep sick (laughs) (laughs) the more you know so yeah big game last week huge but the seahawks have always had a bad trend of not being able to cover fucking tight ends for whatever reason to have bobby wagner or even when K.J. Wright and Bobby Wagner are on the field together. Oh, <laughs> dating back to when fucking Cam and Earl were on the field at the same time as these guys. And Sherman, nobody covers tight ends on the Seahawks. I don't know what the fuck it is. So, with that being said, when you have two tight ends that can catch the fucking ball and can run, which the 49ers have, I knew that the Seahawks were in trouble. So, with all the yardage that they allowed in the first game, I knew that it was going to be a big yardage game for Mullins again. So today, he threw for 275 yards, almost 300 yards. A touchdown and no interceptions. And he wasn't he wasn't pressured or anything like that until the very last few drives of the game where, they, where the defense gave the offense the opportunity to win the game but Pete Carroll and Schottenheimer feel like it's a good idea to stick to their fucking identity and run the ball for two yards every play and then punt the fucking football. It's amazing the Seahawks are as good as they are because Brian Schottenheimer is probably the worst offensive coordinator. I don't think the he's the worst. I don't think he's the worst. I think he's got a good mentality and he's got good trick plays and shit. He's not the worst. Far from the worst. Minnesota's offensive coordinator... Well, they just fired him. They just fired him. He was fucking terrible. So, any whom... Anywho, the the run game was on today, but it just was not what the Seahawks needed to win the game. They needed Russell Wilson to exploit that backfield that was fucking damaged. I think they need Seabass to not miss extra points, man. That too. <laughs> I mean, that sucks. Seabass also needs to make those those uh, you know those crucial tackles on fucking kickoffs if he's the only one back there. The dude is built like your a f- kicker is trying to tackle someone. Something went wrong. Right? <laughs> no, I agree. To it. I agree one hundred percent. But he should be able to at least attempt. He just ran to the side. That's true. They did have a kick up. So the, the Seahawks missed an extra point, and the right after gave the Forty Niners had a kickoff return yep. touchdown, and they right still after. won by three points in overtime. Yep. <laughs> like. That feels like a fluke. <laughs> it, it was. I mean, it was a bad game. And then, you know, the, the thing that really killed the Seahawks was 14 penalties for 148 fucking yards. Ooh. Unbelievable. And that's coming from an offensive line that's been relatively disciplined as of late. Unfucking believable The defense had stupid penalties. The offense had stupid penalties. And not to mention, the referees threw some bullshit flags. And I'm not one of those types to say the Seahawks lost the game because of stupid fucking referees. Because I think every referee is a dumbass. So, you know, with that being said, they did cost the Seahawks a lot of big plays for no fucking reason. And and it it sucks, you know. But, Joe, I mean, you were voicing some some concerns about the refereeing in in the Giants game as well, and it just kind of makes you think, when are they going to fucking hold these guys accountable? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I know that one crew got fired it's... because they sucked, but <laughs> Vito just lowers his mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like I it's mean, getting worse and worse. You're right. Like, the, the quality of officiating is definitely going downhill. Downhill. Pat Shermer looked like he was going to punch that referee in the face because... So Shermer throws a challenge flag because Derrick Henry steps out of bounds quite clearly. The Fox camera freeze frames and zooms in on it, and you see this foot just completely surrounded by whiteness. 
He challenges the play, and they don't overturn it after they say he did. And it doesn't make any sense. And then that was his second challenge, too, so he doesn't have any more. There was at least, I forget exactly what happened, but there was definitely a play later on that he would have won the challenge as well because they kept making terrible calls. Not to mention, there was one early on where, like, the referees got in a shouting match with each other because Russell Shepard bobbles this ball, catches it on the sideline, and this one guy was, like, insistent. He definitely didn't catch that. They end up ruling that he did because he fucking did when you watch the replay. Just get the calls right, you know? Uh, like that you game? know, and they threw that, you know, so Russell Wilson, or not Russell, Russell Wilson, Wilson, sorry, um, Richard Sherman and Tyler Lockett got into a collision, but the big thing is, is, I mean, it was more on the aggression of Richard Sherman hitting Tyler Lockett, so they threw a pass interference because Tyler Lockett was on the ground when Russell threw the football towards him. That's a pass interference. Whether you know whether you like it or not, whether it's a soft call or, or whatever, that is a point where you have to throw the flag and you get it right. It sucks, but that's a fucking pass interference if you're tackling the receiver and he's not able to make the catch. Yeah. So they throw the flag. Uh, Richard Sherman goes up and fucking screams at these referees for five minutes, and then all of a sudden the referees come back on and they pick up their flag and say that there's no pass interference play on the on the play. Wow! Unreal! I didn't think That's that that crazy. was that was part of the game. That shit never works. You I feel like the, the Seahawks works, could man. argue penalties all day long, and they would just tell him to go fuck themselves. <laughs> I mean, if Eddie should just argue every fucking holding play he does, or Prosit could go out there and and argue every holding play he does. Hey, we hold on every play, just like every offensive line in the entire league. Every O line holds every play. It's just when the referees want to throw the flag. They do, and it alters the game big time. I think that, honestly, I think holding should be brought back to, uh, or not even brought back to, it was never a five-yard penalty, I'm sorry, but it should be brought to a five-yard penalty because it's so often that it happens and it alters the game. It ruins the game. (sighs) So this is why I think my man is going to kick off that XFL, and I think it's going to fucking work. (laughs) Your Call McMahon, me crazy, you the might XFL, say. he hate me, it's going to work. Rod, yes, I remember it. Tommy Maddox, too, yep. came out of the air. It's so going to work, you I think, You think you. offensive holding has to change the five? What I think needs to change is that pass interference should be a 15-yard penalty pass instead of a spot be, foul. Pass interference should be 15 yards, no extra yards, nothing And defensive holding it. should not be an automatic first down. <laughs> I agree. Five-yard penalty on defensive holding. No first down. I mean, there's just the officiating ruins games for a lot of people. It ruins chances for a lot of teams. And like I said, I gave you guys a pre-warning. I was a little pissy and butthurt coming on to this <laughs> <Yeah>. episode. <laughs> so, I mean, I... I Recording I mean, half an hour late because of least I'm coming. Overtime. At least I'm... <laughs> at least we're bringing it in here with some, uh, you know, with some facts and some knowledge. And, uh, Joe, why don't you tell us what you're about to crack over oh, there. It's oh, a, ready? Here it comes. Some of that local shit. Yeah, this is the uh, Rubens Brews out of Ballard, Seattle, Washington. This is their Holiday Goze. It doesn't uh, smell good. An ale spiced with cranberry and orange. I it bought this without bad. trying it, so let's go it ahead. It smells and really bad. I'm not even. It smells sure good. I taste. There it we go. Like See, this one is better. I already tried one of them. This one is better than the other one I had. Ale it brewed, smells like feet. Ale brewed. You might. I mean, with <sighs> cranberry. Orange zest Ooh. and spices. Oh, okay. It's it's a goze, so it's supposed to be sour. It does have a bit of a funky aftertaste. It, it smells like feet. Just try it, dude. Stop <laughs> sniffing it. Come on. Oh, I am 100% about it. You like it? Yes. Does, it's, it kind of has a Bud Light finish to it. I'm kind of not digging that. Yeah, it's okay. I wish it was sourer. It has <laughs> sourer. sourer. It, it almost tastes like rancid instead of sour. Yeah, yeah. It's especially because it's got that real beery finish, you know. Yeah. Have you guys ever had like, I like the, the tartness of at the it's end? It's got like of a most pickled hours. egg fart kind of feeling. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like it, but, yeah, but, yeah, I mean, with that being said, <laughs> it's <laughs> and Christian likes it. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> Christian his pickled egg farts. Pickled egg farts. No, I think <laughs> I think it's an enjoyable taste when you when you first drink it's it. It's certainly unique. It and is. Ru- Rubens does some good stuff. They have like a rye IPA they, that tastes like rye bread. They have a sour ale. It's like a blue can, and I don't know what it's called. <laughs> but, <laughs> pardon me. <laughs> it is 
It's good. I like it. I, I like this again, one. Huh? I like their other sour ale. Yeah, comes they're good. A, they're good. Comes in a blue can, I think. I used to I when I lived in called. Ballard, um, they moved their tasting house, so they had a location a few blocks away, and then they opened a second location because they're getting too popular. Like they wanted to brew more, and they so they moved their tasting room to literally the next building over. Um, and then, so yeah, there was a brewery in my backyard <laughs> and we would go over there all the time and it was awesome. One day they had like a goat event where they brought a, speaking of goats, that's like a regular theme on the show, I guess. Anyways, they brought like goats over that you could pet at the brewery and the line was so fucking long that like I was trying to leave my house and people thought I was cutting the line. I'm like, no, this is my building. I'm not trying to cut your spot in line. I'm trying to get to my front fucking door, dude. So this, this, this tastes like feet and, or- and rotten oranges. Damn. Vito, Vito, not a fan, huh? Vito's is, I will admit this isn't my favorite sour ever, or not the best Ruben. It's not product. my favorite, but, but I it saw does it, the trick. I saw it at Trader Joe's, and the logo I is have a bad can, really fucking awesome. One of, the, one of the cans was bad This last can is time. better than the other can I had, too. I'm enjoying my can. The Holiday Goze. It's got a cool logo that looks like somebody took the Ruben's logo and ate bitified it. Or, or actually, I guess it looks like it made, they made it into an ugly sweater. It does. <laughs> it's cool. You know, so there's a... I'm digging so it. it. You know, we're right by Lake City. Mm-hmm. There's a, a beer shop called, I think it's called like Chuck's? the the Last Drop, oh. the Last Drop Shop or something like that. It's a beer shop up the street. Uh, my dad is good friends with the owner. I think one of these days we should go in, we should go in there and check it out and get a few different local beers and, and you know, <coughs> talk yeah. about that place because I've been there once before. Cool little spot. I like the I, I enjoy the beer tasting aspect. Have you been of, to, to of, Chuck's Chuck's Hop Shop? I haven't been to Chuck's, but I've, pretty I good. mean, I've tried stuff yeah. from Chuck's. I had a friend come to uh, one of my birthday barbecues, and he brought a ginormous fucking growler, and it was ooh, pardon me, a burping machine, and a fiend like, man. You know, he's this dude. His name is Justin, a real funny guy. You know, we crazy guy, funny guy, awesome. Worked with him at Dun Lumber. Shows up. You know, I didn't think he was even going to show up. Shows up, brought the growler, big old growler with a... I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was like a light, a lighter IPA that didn't... It didn't taste like shit. (laughs) (laughs) These are haters, man. Usually IPAs to me just kind of taste like shit. So was it just like a pale ale then? I think so, but I, I, I... You know, I'll get it. I'll get the name from him and remember what it is. But whatever it was, it was a subtle IPA, and it was good. It was nice. It was strong. And, you know, it went really well with our with our bratwursts. So, and speaking of bratwursts, I do need to go to Leavenworth since this Mart, trip. So you can buy it. our bratwursts. Do we have bratwursts now? Yeah. We have bratwurst dinners. I totally forgot Mark's to get my peanuts. Blog. Do you think they'll give me my free peanuts tomorrow? It expired last Saturday. They'll give you your free peanuts. Yeah, they'll give you your free peanuts. I'd rather be working tomorrow. No. Damn no. it. <laughs> um, anyway, so going back to the NFL. <laughs> back on topic. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going back to the NFL, you guys, this beer is really good. I like it. I enjoy it. It's the Holiday goes. I think reviews are mixed for the Beefy Boys, but I am a medium fan, and Vito hates it. So. I enjoy it. I enjoy I, it. So I, we'll go 50 I feel like there could be a version of this that doesn't suck, but the can I opened at least, it's... It, if it didn't have the feet in it, it probably wouldn't suck. A fair review, my friend. All right. <laughs> so... We're, you know, we're probably going to wrap up this NFL talk a little bit. You know, poor Michael Kendricks. What feel, happened to him? feel fucking horrible for this guy. So not only is he getting, you know, the whole... Uh, he's going to have to go to court. Might face, you know, about 20 years Federal in prison. prison 25 yeah. years to pr- in prison for insider trading. Vito, have you heard about this story at all? Nope. I don't well, know anything okay. about sports. The, the important thing about it is that he's going to go to jail for insider trading. He was part of this big scheme, or probably. And they used code words. And since he was in Philadelphia, their code word for shady inside trade was cheesesteak. Anyways, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got a good cheesesteak for you instead of like a hot tip. <laughs> so, yeah. So he's going to jail, or he might be going How to jail. How cheesy. You know, we, we never know what's going on with this whole case. He's probably going to serve a little bit. But... He got released from the Browns. So when he got released from the Browns, the Seahawks immediately picked him up. And this is one of the better linebackers in the league as well. So when he joined the when he joined the team, the Seahawks were like a turnover machine. They were like just forcing turnover after turnover. Plus Like Met Mart. <laughs> plus Damn. Thomas hadn't been hurt yet. Oh. <laughs> so 
when when Thomas got hurt, he was out. Flipped the team off, did all that stupid bullshit. And then um, right after that game, in that you know the same game, this they the NFL suspended Michael Kendricks from playing football. And it was like a, we don't know how long you're going to be suspended type deal. So then like two weeks goes by and then they're like, okay, well, your suspension will last until, you know, around, I think it was, I think it was the the 10th of December was his first game back. Monday night. Monday night against uh, the Vikings here in Seattle. Uh, broke his tibia. Ooh, he's out for ouch. the season. Shit. And he's got his hearing in January. Let's pray for the guy. He didn't hurt anybody. He didn't kill anybody. He just did some trading. Pray for him. Rip. Pray for um, me. <coughs> yeah, with that being said, we're going to wrap up the NFL topic. I'm, I'm a little pissy and butt sore. Um, I will throw something out there in the college football world. I did see earlier this week that the that the BCS was interested in upgrading to eight, eight oh. teams in the playoffs. But Finally, it's just a little small, you know. I didn't get too invested in that because it's not really a big a big deal right now. Just because they're going to get these playoffs underway, and we're going to see the same national championship that we've seen for the last fucking ten years, and then then they're going to realize two okay, SEC wait a teams again is oh no, it's not. It's not this year because of Notre Dame. Is that where they get the phrase tenure? Is from like when somebody's been there ten years? No. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, I like you're it. Just, you're very <laughs> precocious. I like it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll, we'll bounce out of here. Anyway, we're closing bow, it up bow. with that one. Um, in some interesting news in the local world, you know, you know, in our little Seattle network here, our buddy uh, Mexi Jake just dropped a new single, and it's called Loose Change. It's available on all of his platforms. Uh, link in bio. And, you know, give it a check out. Give the guy some love. Good friend of mine. Whoop, whoop. And, you know, we hope to get him on the show soon so he could talk to us, give us some goofy stories, join the fun, maybe tell us a spooky story. You never know. Ooh. And, uh, you know, of course, we'll talk about his music. You know, we'll get him in here for you guys so that you guys can learn a little bit more about him on a personal level. <clears throat> and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do the same thing with uh, Jake Crocker as well because I know he's been busy. And um, so if, if we're, on, you know, now that we're in the music topic, you know, we were talking about metal music a little bit earlier when we were setting music. up all the microphones. So, Vito, I don't know if you know this, but... So, this is a boner. Alright, this is going to bum me out. A boner? Because it bummed me out. Oh, are you talking... Okay, yeah, So, earlier this week, it was announced that Slayer was going on tour with Lamb of God, Amon Amarth, and Cannibal Corpse. Fucking sick. Fucking sick, right? Hold on. <laughs> Fucking sick? The day after. So they announce it, and the day after they announce it, Cannibal Corpse's guitarist, Pat O'Brien, is fucking arrested. <laughs> Shit. Bad, bad news. So then when more comes out on, this, on, the, on what happened... Was it manslaughter? It was... It's weirder it was, than that. It, it was aggravated assault on a police officer... With, with a deadly weapon. So he charged the police officer with a knife and they fucking tased his punk ass. And a burglary where he injured two people in the home invasion. And then his fucking house was set on fire. And live ammunition was going off as the firemen were trying to put it out. This was like it's as he was getting arrested. It was, was like at the same arrested, time. They found, him, they found him like two like two houses over hiding by, behind a fence. And they found him... Brought him in, slapped the anti-suicide vest on him. His bail is set for uh, 50 G's. So 50 grand. The The band hasn't released a statement on it, I don't think. And the tour hasn't released any statement. Yeah, as crazy. far as I know, the tour is still going to happen. They're definitely going to replace Pat O'Brien. It's a bummer. It's sad. I love Pat O'Brien. But the one thing I will say in the metal world is a lot of these guys, you know, I was talking a little bit about this with Lucas the other day at work. Shout out, Lucas Shout out Baker. To Lucas. Yeah, they a lot of these metalheads or like metal, you know, musicians, they get arrested for a lot of funky shit, a lot of like child pornography type, you know, that kind of shit. Not cool or rape or anything like that. Or like doing drugs, but not like cool drugs, like not PCP cool drugs. or something. You know, I mean, obviously that P- Pat O'Brien looks like he's been 
he's been dabbling into something that's got his he's lost his marbles bath salts um, or something it looks like it it yeah. looks like he was I on, saw the, on I the saw that photo I saw the po- I saw the thing you posted yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it it's not you know it sucks but you know what at least he didn't get arrested for child pornography or child rape or rape in general but let's just uh let's be proud that it was at least something metal like I, w- I didn't. I don't. I don't want to make fun weapon. of like someone's tragedy, but this is like the most metal arrest ever. Like they can't put out the fire at his house because the house is shooting at the firefighters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, okay. So it's the most metal. Like, I mean, it's one of the more metal ways to get arrested here. Those guys in you know in, like the, cold, in, Norway? in the cold part yeah, of the world. Okay. Those guys are getting arrested for a whole lot more spooky. Burning shit. churches. Burning your fucking neighborhood church down is pretty fucking bad. That's fucked up. And <laughs> and forcing somebody to drink your blood is pretty interesting what? too. So Jesus. Yeah, dude. All these guys. Oh I mean, God. they're they're crazy. I think we talked about Mayhem's album cover on one of the episodes. We talked about how. The guitar, or not the guitar, sorry, the, the lead singer blew his brains out with a shotgun, and the band went and took pictures of it before they even, like, cleaned up. Yeah, the, yeah, you talked about this. Yeah, 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 metal. okay, okay. I, I just, I was trying to make sure we remember that we talked about it. So, in the metal world, it's a big shock. It's a big, it's a big bummer, because I just saw them last November. So, last year, they were here. Great time. They played at uh, Numo's in Cap Hill. Small venue for a band like that, but it's not that small. It's a small for a, for a band like Cannibal Corpse. That's yeah, like one I of the suppose. smaller venues they could play. But I've also seen them at Studio Seven, which holds like an, a max occupancy of like twelve people. So I saw them at Summer Slaughter when I first, you know, in like two thousand sixteen or something like that. Moved into my apartment and then like, boom! I was at that show and it was like resting at my apartment for like three days after that because my body was just worked. I remember I saw Cannibal Corpse in like 2012 or 2011 or something on like a boat. They like, didn't oh, a seven, boat? S- seven whatever tons of metal, the cruise ship? No, no, it wasn't oh. that one. It was uh, That's like a, a historic name. boat that, that was on land. Like a schooner? <laughs> oh. Interesting. Like the Queen Mary or something, oh. I remember. Oh, that's weird. It's some, so it was on Long Beach. I don't the remember. The acoustics what must have been terrible, is, man. I saw. I talked about this. I saw Bad Religion at the Showbox Soto, and it was awful. Just that place is so echoey, and it was too. It was fucking it really cold. Is. And you shouldn't be cold at a punk show. You should be sweating your ass off. <laughs> I saw uh, Dropkick Murphys there. At oh, the Showbox shit. Soto like recently. Uh, not recently. This was this was uh, 2014. The bla- wow, that is. I didn't even realize they were still together. Dude, they're still together. They're still touring. I think they're even going on another yeah, they tour. Toured la- they, they, they had a show Damn. up here like last year. Yeah, I went and saw them last year. But yeah. that was at WAMU, and I wasn't the biggest fan I was, of I was big yeah. into the Dropkick Murphys for a while. Oh, back I in love college. Back I love the college. Dropkick Murphys. They're what album band. was they're that? They're one of the best bands to see live. They're just, they're the craziest. I mean, they have so college. much fun. Their biggest hit is a song about getting drunk in a bar and beating people up. I mean... <laughs> Pretty much. So what would you expect their show to go? Yeah, Everybody's exactly. Everybody's drinking in the parking lot, and then you go yeah. in, and they open up... The way they open up their show is really fucking awesome. They play that song, The Foggy Do. So they play the, the, the song in its entirety. So it's the whole way through, and I think it's... Uh, God, who's that singer? She's a girl. She's got a shaved head. She looks like... Sinead O'Connor? Swan. Yes, thank you. <laughs> She looks like a swan. And she looks like a swan. So they they play her song, The Foggy Do, the entire way through, which is like kind of a dark, dingy, sh- sh- you know, like it's it dropping the word spooky again because it is. It's the big spook. Everybody's dead silent, and they're just watching this. They're hearing it, and they have the fog machines going on. And then when that so the second the song ends, they come out, and they play some fucking heavy shit. And next thing you know, the guy that you were standing next to, you and him are scrapping it out. Of course. To the Dropkick <laughs> Murphys. Excuse me. That's I see. I'm saying excuse me behind every burp because I feel bad for burping and not saying excuse me because one of our frequent listeners dropped the comment on on Facebook and said, "Please say excuse me after you." Who burp. said that? I didn't. Yeah, see it that. was your sister. Oh, was it? it was your sister. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, she called me out. <laughs> <laughs> she called me out. That's I'll take so it. I'll say excuse moi. So anyway, I remember I went with uh, my friend Lewis and then my cousin Booge, who was on the show. Yeah. 
and they disappeared. They're, you know, the second the song started, they're gone. But then, next thing I know, we've all gotten into fights. But then they play one song where you're fighting with somebody, and then next thing you know, the next song is like, Kiss Me, I'm Shit-Faced. <laughs> and you're linked arms with the dudes that you were just like tussling with and getting in their face. And you're linked up with them singing the song. So it's more of like a, we're not going to beat each other up to a level of we're beating each other up because it's like a rap concert. Or it's like for the sake of just beating people up. Yeah. It's more of like we're going to beat you up because the song is about getting drunk and beating people up. So That's when I was into them too. That album and the one after. So everybody's drunk and then boom. They're in the show. Everybody's fighting. Everybody's having a hoot. And the security does not give a fuck. Because they know nobody's going to get trampled. You know, that's the big thing about these concerts. Nobody's getting stepped on, trampled, or anything like that. But everybody's having a good time. No fight is a serious fight. It's just, you know, you're punching somebody in the chest. No, people are kind, and especially for, like, a mainstream punk band like that. Like, if you fall down, someone's going to pick you the fuck yeah, back speak, up. Yeah. Spe- speaking of all that kind of stuff, that, that concert you were talking about when I mentioned the boat thing, uh, the... Uh what was it called again? The, the, the cruise ship. Yeah, the, seven I think it was like seven tons of metal or whatever. Yeah, you so call I, it. I can't remember yeah. exactly. It's like seventy. Um, apparently, tons of metal uh, I heard that the uh, the hosts of that um, like boat or whatever, the people who worked the boat for that show, so they're the nicest people. The, the metalheads were the nicest people that they've ever had on the boat. And dude, they, I'm telling you. And man. they also bought the most alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, dude. The, the metal community is such a great. <laughs> yeah. It's such a great community. Yeah. I love them. And going to these concerts, these bands put on such fun shows. They go all out, and they, you know, they perform to the extreme every show. That's what we all appreciate about them. And then everybody in the crowd. You know, there's the occasional asshole who's throwing punches when he's not supposed to yeah, be. But those are the people who get kicked out. Those are the people who <laughs> either get kicked out or somebody gives them a big old body check in the in the pit. And then next thing you know, they stand up and they're humbled out. You know, it, the metal community is a great community. Big shout out to them. They're, they are killer. They're awesome. And so, yeah, that, that Dropkick Murphy show is just so crazy because... I went in there like a doofus with a white t-shirt on and <laughs> and shorts and my shorts had been torn from the belt and then my t-shirt was ripped and then I had a bloody nose as well and just a great time loved everything about it had to go to work the next day and I was all all I was just a wreck but the funny thing was my manager at at, at where I worked the Home Depot he was at the same show. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> so, so when I came That's in looking funny. like shit, he came in like three hours later, which is like his normal time. And I knew he was a big Dropkick Murphys fan, so I went up to him and I was like, dude, I went and saw him last night. He's like, oh, he's like, you were at the at the, sh- at the show box last night? Because he was like, I was there. I was in the bar. I was like, dude, I'm not old enough to be in that, uh, in that section yet, but holler at you. <laughs> I was only 20 at the time. Yeah, back when I worked at Jiffy Lube, I went to a Against Me show at the Neptune and ran into my assistant manager that I fucking hated, which just made me angry. Why is he here? We're not allowed. He's not allowed to be into cool bands. He's an asshole. <laughs> Get out of here. Did I ever tell you guys about when I saw Against Me at fucking El Corazon? <laughs> you ever been? You ever seen a show at El Corazon? Yes. It's It was so, yeah. Well, I went with, I had a bunch of friends there, but my friend Patrick was funny because he's this little guy. And we were like near the front, and he's like, I want to go get a drink. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to crowd surf to where I want to go. So he like climbs up on the barricade and he like points at the people he's going to crowd surf on. And then that's how he got out of the crowd, was over the top. (laughs) 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 And then my friend Kelly didn't realize we're going to a punk show, so she wore flip flops, lost lost her big toenail, and fainted (laughs) in the bathroom. Yeah, it was a scene because it gets so fucking hot. That place gets so fucking hot. I was wearing cargo shorts, I sweated through them. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, I usually sweat through my shorts. Uh, I mean, the the proper concert attire for like a punk metal show is uh, like a black t shirt, like a Dickies black t shirt or a band shirt, a black band shirt, and cargo shorts yeah. and boots, closed toed shoes at least. Yep, you do not want to go to a show. Uh, you know, just letting your friend know right now, you probably don't want to go to a show in flip flops. Now, in her defense, it was very last minute. Like we're uh, literally enlisted her as we were leaving <laughs> so she told her this isn't this she isn't didn't open quite know mic. what she was getting into this is an open mic at your local cafe all right yeah this isn't this is a rowdy rambunctious john johnson or whatever jack johnson <laughs> oh john god johnson. Ugh. 
<laughs> Jack Johnson makes me want to pee. John Mayer, yeah. In that, see, in that genre, I'll take John Mayer over John or I, John. Or what's they, his name? Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson. John Jackson. I don't know. I don't want to hear about this dude talking <laughs> about his fucking pancakes and shit. Didn't he do the Curious George soundtrack? I, yes. <laughs> and I think that song, the, the pancake song, came from that soundtrack. I don't know. I don't know anything about him. I don't like. They his all music. sound the same to me, man. He's whack. I like John Mayer because that dude's a player. <laughs> yeah, he's a player. <laughs> Oh jeez! And yeah, I mean the music world has been uh, pretty interesting as of late. You know, as uh, as upcoming shows. So, I mean, as everybody knows, last last week was my anniversary with my girlfriend. Four years for Christmas, I got her Michael Bublé tickets. Very fun. I'm gonna yell, tell him to sing his Christmas music because I don't know any of his other songs. And this is in April. So hopefully he will sing one Christmas song for the one time. If he's a uh, you know, if he's listening right now, play your Christmas music. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing that I'm really excited about I, that I've mentioned before, I got my culture wall tickets, and then my dad. You really are up. excited about this culture wall? I can't fella. wait. I cannot <laughs> wait. One of the best shows I've been to. The guy sounds exactly like he does on his on his live recordings. So that's happening in January, and then. In February, I'm seeing one of my all-time favorite country singers ever. You know, like, I'm talking about, I grew up on this dude's music. I've seen him in movies. Uh, Tim McGraw. Oh. <laughs> Chris Christopherson is coming oh. to the Paramount. And as everybody knows, he's getting a little crusty. Yeah. But the dude can still play. So, you know, my dad surprised me with those tickets. I'm excited. And then, uh, just the other day, I surprised my girlfriend with uh, Queen tickets. We were talking about Queen the other day, and it was like right the day after we talked about Queen on the podcast. Really? They announced a tour. So they're coming. They're coming back with uh, with Adam Lambert. I don't know if you guys know him from his solo from music days. Maroon Five? No, 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 no. I wouldn't go see it. I wouldn't go see it if it was Maroon 5's guy. But at least Adam Lambert. Adam Lambert's the guy from American Idol. Oh, I think oh, oh, I think he was on that or or one of those other singing shows, and he had a solo career. Didn't like his solo career music, but then all of a sudden he announced a, a tour with Queen like four years ago. So they went on tour and it was really successful. So they brought him back two years ago. Oh my god, he kind of looks like Freddie Mercury. And they went on they went on tour again. It was another successful tour. So then this movie came out. The Queen movie came out. So then they. They're going on tour again because of the movie. So I figure to see Queen, you know, some of the original band, to just enjoy their music and to see them live. I've heard a lot of good things about Adam Lambert. I heard that he doesn't try to be Freddie Mercury. I heard that he doesn't, like, force anything. He just kind of does his own show. He lets the band do their own thing. I'm really excited for it. I think it's going to be a real hoot. You know, Haley and I both really love, we love Queen. And, um... Uh, on the road trip that we just took, we listened to majority of Queen and yeah. a lot of country music. And, um, you know, yeah. So with that being said, you know, music is looking good it's coming musical. up in the, in the, in the 2019. I want, I want to go back to something you said. I, I don't want to sit on this topic for too long, but um, you mentioned Michael Bublé's Christmas albums. Are you guys familiar with the Last Christmas Challenge? <laughs> this is a social media thing. Last Christmas challenge. Is that like the Wham song? Yeah. Okay, so what, what's the challenge? So the goal was, the game is, how deep into December can you go without hearing Wham's Last Christmas? <laughs> Ooh, I haven't heard Wham's. <laughs> really? You've heard, heard the covers? That heard was my point. Covers. I don't know if the covers count. Because I feel like there are only about 15 Christmas songs. and they all get. Song. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Last Christmas, Christmas I, gave I gave you my heart, heart but the very next day... day you gave it away. I didn't even know that was a Christmas song. I heard it back in like high school. Yeah. It starts last Christmas. Last what are you talking Christmas. Let's just so much pay attention to it. Well, anyway, uh, uh, 2019 know, would, uh, you know, September. That one's, that one's gonna be oh, the yeah, We yeah, Teach Vita. September 2019, Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden, baby. <laughs> are, are you going? Really are you going? Did you get your tickets? I didn't get my tickets yet, but I'm gonna go. Dude, we got. Yeah, we got. I gotta get my tickets. I gotta hit that up. There's no way. I'm going to miss Iron Man. Dude, we should go together. I think so, too. I think so. Band date. Hell, yeah. <laughs> Band and then date. Kiss? Dude, fucking Kiss? 
Do it. So that one's already over, right? No, that one's coming. No, there are the tickets. All these, all these ones you guys talked about a few weeks ago are like not for months. <laughs> 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 yeah, but you got to understand the hype of getting a ticket. I know, I know, like, I know, I know, I know. See, that reminds me. Uh, let me Is give Kiss a, a ticket still available? Or they, they should still be. I, I don't know. They I might, might try. And, I might try to get in on that too. I would check it out and see and if go with they're you still on that going. one too. But a uh, quick shout out to a uh, frequent listener uh, slash cousin Ramon. I still Come have to pay on. you for your kiss ticket. Don't let me forget. Text me. Um, Vito, what are you doing, buddy? <laughs> He's trying to flip stuff. Vito's had two beers now? Yeah. Yeah, two beers, and not one Damn. of them was on the floor. Oh, yeah, he didn't spill any. <laughs> pretty impressed. <laughs> Damn. I mean, yeah. I had uh, three earlier and half a bottle of Prosecco. Damn, but... you partying, Jeez. bro. All right. Days off. I can't finish this one because it tastes like feet. <laughs> I'll fucking drink it. Give it here. It's right. good, man. <clears throat> we got any other music points? We're about forty minutes in. We got we got plenty of content so far. Yeah, Vito <laughs> likes Iron Maiden. Vito really loves Iron Maiden. Um, I mean, I get I I got dude. You got the best one. You crazy? This taste doesn't taste like feet at all. I you know what? It's crazy. Like, since he's taking it, you know, this bathroom break is sponsored by uh, local beers. Rubens. <laughs> yep, Rubens <laughs> local beers. So. Another local beer that I kind of enjoy is, I mean, it's a seasonal beer, so I enjoy it maybe once, twice. I don't really like too many beers from Elysian, but I do like the Night Owl every now and then. Maybe, you know, once in October, maybe once in November, and that's about it. But, you know, funny story about that was uh, back when I was working one night, I was closing up, and this was back when we closed super late. Um, so this is like the 10 p.m. closing day. Yeah, 10 yeah. p.m. closing, and then we get out at like 11. So I'm getting out of work, and this was back when uh, <laughs> when Pangle. Well, fucking noodles! I knew it was gonna <laughs> yep, be a noodles. Noodles, sorry. noodles was working, and um, you know he and I didn't really know each other too well that then, then. But I never had any problems with noodles. You know, I think yeah, you weren't his was, boss. <laughs> What's that? You weren't his boss. I wasn't. A, yeah, but you weren't his boss yet either. <laughs> Not at that. Not time. that point. <laughs> So we were both shithead brigade. <laughs> yeah. And so anyway, you know, he, he bought me one of those. I was like, oh, yeah, let's let's have a beer. So I'm like, all right. So I'm like, where are we going to? I'm like, should we just like go back somewhere? Or, and then we sat by the dumpsters outside. <laughs> in the back parking lot. We sat at the dumpster. And this was at like uh, almost 11 o'clock or like 11. Like by the, like the, all the pallets like where the smokers go? It was like in the smokers yeah. corner. <laughs> and we sat there and had. Classy. Yep. Classy. Classy rat boy <laughs> night owl beer. And that was my first experience oh my with that. We could have a whole episode just of ridiculous peg stories. I don't want to give to them now. Yes. The guy <laughs> is a story machine. And he's a cool. He's a good, good friend of ours. I haven't seen him in a while. I hope he's all right. I was going to ask right. you that. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> So we so Vito, while you were taking your leak, we talked about Elysian. Is there any Elysian beers that you kind of enjoy or I like the uh the Night Owl. That's what he yeah, said. Yeah, that's what I said. <clears throat> Sweet. Um, is that the pumpkin one? It's the pumpkin. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Tell Have me, you guys man, ever had it's the, like uh, the it's it's like the better pumpkin pumpkin there's beer? There's also this like nine point two one that I had that was pretty good. Have you ever got, do they still make the split shot? Have you ever had the split shot? I haven't had, oh yeah, 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 they it. do make the split shot. It's a, it's a stout that's like half cold brew. Yep, I remember that, and they it's still fun. make it, and I'll have to try that. I really my favorite is the Day Glow, they make about five IPAs, that's my favorite of their IPAs. It you tastes know what? like um, tropical let's, fruit. Let's make dude, a, this beer is making me burp like fucking crazy. I told you, dude, I'm out here burping up a storm, it's all that yeast. So, <laughs> yeast. it's all that, ch- that toe yeast. Yeah. Um, hey, boys are crazy. Anyway, I think next I think next episode we should we should each get an Elysian an Elysian beer and we should have another taste test on that. I do really like bringing in these local beers. I'm a big fan of it. I just think it's yeah. it's fun trying out a couple of different things. Um, I really want to. I'll bring in one of my favorite Elysians, which is the Men's Room Red. Quick shout out to the Men's Room. They're a great show. Uh, their beer is awesome. They have a good beer. I enjoy it. And then they have the men's room black. Oh, really? I didn't know that. That one's like more of like the, the limited edition. I, one see. That you would get. I see. I see. But the, the, the trick with that beer was you would buy it and you would let it kind of, kind of age. So my dad bought it one year and I remember we had it in the back of our fridge 
I mean, he said that if anybody drank it, he would, like, fucking kill somebody. So he was like, don't drink that beer. We're letting it age. Blah, blah, blah. We're going to see if this works. So we, it sat there for, like, a year and a half. So then eventually the question rose, when are we going to pop this open and try it? And so I think this was when the Seahawks were playing Carolina to go to the divisional championship against Green Bay in 2014. Christian only tells time by football games, guys. (laughs) A lot of my memories come from football games. And um, maybe maybe I should try it because I don't have any memories. (laughs) Goldfish brain. So uh, so we he pops it open and it was in there for I think after we rose the question, we let it sit for another probably, you know, the whole season. So it was like uh, two years in our fridge. So we popped it open and we tried it and man, it was good. It was very dark. Nice. It was very dark, and it was it was it was really good. I really not, enjoyed it. A dark and dark beer. Unfortunately, I can't remember the taste of it because that was 2014, and that was a, that was a while ago. But I wish I could uh, try it again. I hope that there's still some left. If there is, holler at me. Let me know if there is, and I'll go I'll go buy one and try it. Maybe let it age for another two years. Um, local beers. Let's get an Legion next for for the next show. You know, totally talk about it. Plug them up. Uh, I'm always down to get more Burke Gilman Brewery. And we should we should yes, have a that, that that stout that you brought I was talking about it in the car. Very good. Oh yeah. Not it was very me. good. But I, I wouldn't drink it at that can the, like that size. That size is like drinking. Well it's like a, a sharing can. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it is. Yeah. But it's that a, it's it's for when you forget your growler. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> That's a like you wouldn't drink straight from a growler either. That's true. Uh, I mean very true. Unless you're me. In, I mean, in which case right. I do both. I've, I've, I've had a couple. Is Jane of not a beer drinker, stuff. man? What is Jane not a beer drinker? No, no, neither, neither am I. I. Oh, I usually get ciders. Oh, because they because they taste like fucking deliciousness, and they're like nine point oh sometimes. <laughs> they can be fucking strong. Look, you bring in a good cider that you really like. Well, ne- 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 next time Bert it, Gilman has uh, next time Bert Gilman has the cranberry Teton, I'm gonna get yeah. that shit. The like cranberry right. Teton was like a 9.0, and it tasted like fall, like the season. <laughs> so of like fall. wet leaves and no, like <laughs> fucking red, the the like gorgeous reds and yellows of the colored trees in mm, Seattle. It tastes Ooh. like purple. All right, I like it. Uh, <laughs> I enjoy it, but yeah, you know what? Next time that next time you see a cider that you really enjoy, pick one up. Let me try it. Uh, just, uh, I'm not a cider guy. Not a cider guy. Well, okay. Do you, do you like any sweet drinks? Not really. Okay, these so are gonna be hard to convince. I'm, I'm I'm usually like a whiskey drinker and stuff like that. Right. I don't really like beer, um, but there's been a few that I've liked. Right, and I really like uh, cider. Normal ciders are okay, but there's certain ciders that are just like really fucking good. Like it's basically juice that has 9.0 alcohol content. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I I just for some reason <coughs> ciders always give me. I mean, my friend Lewis always was drinking ciders. I mean, we went from drinking ice houses to him drinking ciders, and then me still drinking ice houses. <laughs> and I just, I, I just couldn't get into his ciders. I just, I didn't like it. Not a big fan of them. Haven't tried one that I actually enjoy. So, with that being said, um, they're, they're you, you know, you're not a big beer drinker, right? But beer is my shit. Yeah. Ooh. Beer is my. It's I'm an expertise shit. in the Miller Light, <laughs> I was gonna Bud say. Light, Coors Light, <laughs> Mickey's realm. I am your man. If so you wanna... specifically, you're your, I... like upper lower tier. Like, what about like PBR and I hate PBR. Steel Reserve? And no, I hate Steel right. Reserve. I don't like Steel Reserve. I don't like PBR. I'm not the biggest fan of Rainier. But I think we did discuss this with a few friends of ours. Which beer? Is like a, it, it's like a. What's the season for the cheap beer, right? So it's Summer. like, what's your, what's your cheap beer season? So it's like, are you bringing PBR or are you bringing Paps? So we were Those talking are the about same this, thing, buddy. And it was was oh sorry sorry. <laughs> uh, PBR or Rainier? Yeah. House party in house party in the winter time. They everybody said Rainier, and then I think it was uh, something. Something outside, like not at home, not anywhere, but something outside, like drinking in the woods or something like that, or doing something stupid, drinking in public. Paps. 
I don't know what it, it is, but I do it, I do feel the same way. It's it's because it doesn't get hella skunky when it's room temperature. That's the advantage of PBR over those other cheap ass beers. Right. And I I mean every time I go to you know, every time I you know, back when I would go to house parties and shit, it was it was Rainier. You know, it was always Rainier. And then every time I went to an outdoor event, it was fucking packed. Oh, so it weird. makes sense. It that's makes total weird. sense. And I never realized yeah. that until that's funny. we actually sat down and talked about it. So, um, uh, yeah, another, yeah, the, another the, personal the, note, um, I don't like low percentage beers because, uh, beers tend to really fill up my stomach. Mm. So I'll have like two or three beers and not be tipsy and have a stomach full of cardboard. You just feel bloated. <laughs> yeah. You're just really <laughs> burpy. You're like almost a little bit drunk. So it's like the worst part of that. You just want to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you can't cause you can't stop burping. Yes. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. Freaking even Joey Chestnut spotted slamming beers with the like, Bills Mafia. Like when I was doing those, ass. Shout like out like Joey when I was those ice houses. Shout out to Joey Chestnut for slamming Bills fans in the tables and <laughs> slamming <laughs> beers. That is badass. But yeah, like when I was doing those ice houses, those were seven point eight percent and <laughs> and I had a shot of whiskey first. Those toot. were the rare those yeah. are like the rarest ice houses because we got those and they were in the sevens and then They're like I, a shiny Pokemon. And then we went back couple weeks later to get another 18 rank and it was in the 5.5s huh. right. so that was rare but whatever it was it had Vito on his back giggling like a champ well I mean I did have Vito is a full giggle champ man. By he myself, did he basically. slammed a full 18 rack in maybe 10 minutes <laughs> unbelievable full disclosure giggle champs was almost the name of this podcast <laughs> anyway giggle champs <laughs> um Oh, I, I, I've been told many times, by the way, that we really have to emphasize the D in Bud Club because it sounds like we're saying Butt Club. So but. just think about that we're, going we're, forward. We're a beefy Butt Club. Yeah. <laughs> the Anyways. Beefy, the Beefy Boys Butt Club. Up, up to interpretation. We're about 50 and, uh, minutes in right now. And, uh, you know, a quick, uh, a quick note, if you guys say something. On the on the Facebook about as what we need to do, we probably will talk about it on the show. So just a heads up, get used to that. <laughs> get used to us talking about our. That's right, Renee. On the show. Sorry, we burp a lot, Renee. Jeez. Sorry, I burp and sorry I don't say excuse me. I know I should be a gentleman. Um, my mama raised me better. Let's talk about some video games. Word. Let's talk about how Blizzard's fucking over their employees. Uh. Let's talk about how they're how they're still fucking up. We're not going to talk about Diablo. We already discussed that. We already know. Yeah. I mean, it's Don't a meme at this phones? point. Don't you guys even have phones? Don't you guys phones? even have phones? <laughs> so, Vito, I know you're, you know, you're your Blizzard yeah. textbook fanboy. Give us a rundown on, on what, what's going on over there at Blizzard. Yeah, so, uh, uh, like, I know their uh, Activision wants them to cut down costs. Um, so that's probably along the lines of where this came from. As well as the game itself hasn't been doing that well anyway, monetarily, probably. So, um, but yeah, so Heroes of the Storm, they're, uh, they, they're, for any further development is canceled and their, um, esports scene canceled. And they had hyped up it at, uh, BlizzCon without any sort of reference to this coming up anytime soon. Oh, um, see, I didn't know that. That was like two months ago. BlizzCon? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, and, and yeah, so nothing at BlizzCon referenced this or anything close to it. Um, and a- apparently a lot of people have like lost their jobs o- over this and with like little to no actual like notification. Fuck, dude. Yeah. That's crazy. Did you guys hear the Telltale story? Like a whole, a, whole, a whole scene's worth, like... They had to build the scene of this game because it wasn't there originally. And then they basically axed it. And all those people who worked for all that stuff are all out of a job. And yeah. like, Did you guys hear yeah. about the Telltale Studio closure at all earlier this year? <laughs> no, I haven't. It's basically the same story where like these guys came into work one day and they were told they all... The studio was closing. They all had like an hour to gather everything and leave. They were getting no severance. And like no one knew this was coming to the point that like they were trying to get funding two days prior. And like their funding fell apart at the last second and they just shuttered the whole thing. Wow. So like a hundred people are out of work with no severance of any kind. Was this at Blizzard as well? This is at Telltale. Oh, oh, Telltale. Sorry, sorry. I didn't yeah. hear that. 
Uh, dude, that is unreal. I know. It's unbelievable. And then they ended up getting a, sued. Bringing a union into the gaming world. Right? Yeah, well, definitely. I mean, all the discussion of crunch when you're working 100-hour weeks and unpaid overtime and all that because you're a salaried employee, and then you just get let go with no health care, of- no severance of any kind. Like, why would I put my well-being on the line for the company when the company is going to dick me over every time, you know? Yeah, and there's been a lot of horror stories about um, Blizzard employees being basically underpaid for like the industry standard and they yeah. used to give them like so many extra bonuses and benefits that also got cut like mm-hmm. this year damn fuck come on blizzard blizzard what are you doing buddy it's the fucking it's fucking bethesda all over again man uh, it's, it's activision it has to be i mean losing yeah it, it, like the, the, they had a Activision like CEO or something take over on like so, so, some sort of something. There, somewhere. So Activision is being a lot more like hands <laughs> like, on with their hands financials on, I think. now. Yeah. Oh boy! And so, then yeah, oh so boy! With, with and, it being and, with Activision, yeah. aren't they on the battle net with Black Ops Four? Well, for you, PC yeah, game? battle net yeah. is, is the is? battle yeah. net is a uh, Blizzard's <laughs> launcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's also so, got... but they're. They're powering Black Ops 4, correct? I think so. Is this their first Call of Duty game that they're powering? Yeah. Ah. And they, they've, they've also done it with... Uh, uh, what's that other game? The shooter MMO? Borderlands? No, the MMO shooter. Destiny? Yeah. That's Bungie. Destiny 2. Oh, but it's published by Activision. That's right. Yep. That's right. That's right. Uh, I that Man, game. I saw this YouTube me. video. Uh, it was like Heels vs. Babyface or something. and um, he That's was, a wrestling reference, you know. No, I don't. Anyway. <laughs> um, uh, oh, my God. His leg is rotisserary. <laughs> it's real to me, his damn leg, it. <laughs> his leg is rotisserary. But, uh, yeah, he was, he was going fruits. through, like, either, like, popular games or, like, a, uh, a, like um, a main page on a game store or something like that. And it was, like, Activision, Bethesda... This other, I, I I'm bad at remembering anything, but yeah. all all those like like five names in in gaming right now for for production, it was all of them. It was all only them, and it was like, mm. yeah. So great. So there's like a mono, a monop, monopoly on AAA titles right now, mm-hmm. and it's even infested Blizzard at this point. I guess you guys uh, are you guys following all this like, so you're familiar with Fortnite. Yes. Do you know Epic, the company that makes Fortnite? They're yes. launching their own PC marketplace. Wait, that was Epic? Yeah. Oh, cool. You I, know I that? like the game they made. The, this other game they made um, is uh, with um, like gods and stuff. As it was, it was like LOL, but with like third person. Smite God. was it? Yeah, Smite? Smite. I didn't know that was Epic. Yeah, I like think they, that, was they Epic. always shows really up on good. my like play this on PlayStation. Anyways, they're launching their own storefront. And they're giving a better split than Steam gives. So Steam recently changed their policies. I think it's like it starts at seventy thirty creator to Steam, and if your game makes over five million dollars now, it switches to eighty twenty. So yeah. in favor of Steam, I imagine. No, it's the other way. Oh, okay. Steam doesn't take seventy percent of your game revenue. <laughs> <laughs> this is no. not how this shit these works. These days, right? <laughs> these days, it feels like everybody's gonna ripped off. Yeah, yeah. You, you. I wouldn't be surprised. Which it, I mean, I feel like. Vito, I know you're a big PC guy. Yeah. How do you feel about Steam? Because I feel like it's in desperate need of competition. Like, there's a lot of shenanigans that go on in Steam. First of all, it's a resource hog. Second of all, their Mac client is a disaster. And, like, it's updating all the time, doesn't do anything, you know? I, I honestly haven't used Steam in, Oh, because like you're a Blizzard guy. Two years. Yeah. Well, not even that, but, like, I just... Any game that I get, I usually get the game, and then I just install it and play it. Like, the physical? No, no. I, like, download it from their website. Oh. So, like, so I, I, haven't, free. I haven't even yeah, used yeah, Steam yeah, yeah. in, like, two years. Yeah, it's not great. And, like, I... You know, I can... I, their password recovery is bad. It's really bad. Like, they yeah. asked me for, like, what credit card was on file with my Steam account. I'm like, I haven't bought a Steam game in seven years. I don't even know if that credit card is still active. All right? Like, uh, anyways, yeah. They're in desperate need of yeah. competition, and they have now from Epic, you know, just the biggest Well, it, it, it's always going to suck having your right video game library be on a company's server, because as soon as that company goes yeah. under, you don't have any of those games anymore. Well, that's the DRM problem 
anyways. Yeah. Since you're not really buying them, you're just leasing them or licensing them, Ugh. so you don't actually own them. That's what those end user license agreements say, you know? Something you don't American own defense. any piece of software you buy. Even if you buy a physical disc, you don't own it. You license it. It's really stupid. <laughs> yep. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Tiana anyway, off of that depressing note, we should probably talk about something else before the end of the show. Well, wait, I want to talk about <laughs> other companies fucking up. So I've been playing Smash a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Shout out to Tim and Renee. I kicked their asses at Smash when we play together. Anyways, they... Is that online or in person? We play online. Oh. Well, they're in New Jersey. Oh, shit. It's oh. kind of obnoxious because the online, like, you can't play with two players on the same console. So, like, they have to trade off. So I was telling Vito <laughs> on the car ride over, like, I don't really know who I'm playing until I start playing them. Because sometimes it's, like, their seven-year-old son. And sometimes it's, like, the dad. <laughs> so it's like, okay, am I going to have to try hard or not? <laughs> you know? But anyways. Hey, t- Tim's going to hear you talking shit. He's going to go back on there. He's going to whoop your ass, dude. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and your sister, too. Bring it. Anyways, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So they, I don't know if, how familiar you two are with the game, but the single player mode is called the Spirits Mode. So, like, Smash is basically becoming like a video game museum, right? Like, it's a love letter to everything video games, not just Nintendo. Like, mm-hmm. so Spirits Mode, these are like little, like, collectible cards, basically, that, like, from every game that's represented in Smash. So, like, Bayonetta, Street Fighters in there, uh, like um, uh, Castlevania you know, and like a oh, thousand Pokemon. different n- Pokemon, yeah, et cetera. You have like all these side characters, like a thousand different fights. There's like a thousand of these spirit things. Square would not let them put any Final Fantasy references in there. So Cloud's in the game. <laughs> Every stage you play on has about 30 different music tracks you can pick on. Midgar, the Final Fantasy stage, has two. Two tracks. It's the battle theme and the other battle theme. It's not even. <laughs> it's not even the Sephiroth theme, one one winged angel, which is like what everyone wants. Like yeah. they're so. It's so. It's and it's jarring because like everyone else, like all the like Biggs and Amy the cat are all in there. You know, like all the Sonic characters are in there. All like the Capcom guys. Like the entire roster of Metal Gear Solid is in there. But you have no Final Fantasy representation outside of Square, and it's just weird. It's just, like, why? Like, this is, like, the perfect opportunity. And I know they have their own fighting series, Disgaea, but it's, like, so ridiculously Japanese and terrible and just fucking weird. Like, come on. Th- give the people what they want. It's almost like the <clears throat> the battle theme is, like, the music in Madden that's, like, if you don't want to listen to that shitty, like, rap music that they have on there, you, like, kind of turn it off, but then all of a sudden you get, like, the... Like the Madden Orchestra that goes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's just same boring orchestra for those, that you've heard for the last fifteen years in NCAA football. Yeah, and now I was gonna Madden. say there was like those two or three years when they just said fuck it to licensed music and yep. it was only the orchestra. I remember that. I miss that because that I should just turn it off. That rap music they have in there is freaking awful. All right, dude, how do they not get in there with like something like more heavy? They gotta get some heavy. They're shit trying. In there. They got like they got like DJ Khaled in there, man. They're trying to appeal to the Instagram crowd, man. That's I mean, like, I figure that they are, but. Dude, they got to, e- even the NFL in general, they've got to, like, they got to bring in yeah. some heavy shit. And I think, I guess, calling calling it out again, or calling them out again, XFL is probably going to have a lot of dope-ass heavy music. It's going to be, like, Jesus more Christ. of, like, the butt rock, the butt rock of the league. I don't know if they have a video game deal for the XFL. Though. No, fuck no. But I think, in general, the halftime shows, or that, or sorry, not the halftime show, but, like, you know, the big championship show for XFL is definitely not going to be Maroon 5. <laughs> NFL has Maroon 5 being their fucking halftime performer, and I, I can't believe it. It's yeah. just horrible. They suck. It's weird, too, because it's in Atlanta, and there's a big hip-hop scene in Atlanta. You should just Big get hip-hop fucking... scene. Get T.I. out there. Get somebody out there. Isn't get he still in prison? Get Migos out there. Yeah, I was going to say Migos. Sake. With a special something. guest appearance from... Uh... Childish Gambino in there. Bring something, bring something hardcore out there, man. Get some fucking butt rock. What? What's with you in butt rock? That dude, shit I sucks. It's literally called butt rock because it sucks. It's butt rock. Yeah. Dude. It's like when I was when I was digging holes and like jackhammering concrete basements, we didn't listen to anything except butt rock. It was like of every course. single of day. Every single day was the same playlist. Stained, Nickelback, Three oh, Days God. Grace. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow. The same fucking... That was like my middle no, school No, like, is. puddle of mud in there. The same... Fucking, oh, well, I mean, puddle of mud, of course, Talk about some Creed. Mix it up. Creed? Creed was yeah. in there, too. God. <laughs> uh, listen, call me crazy, man, but when I was doing when I was doing that work, I couldn't, I couldn't listen to anything else. I mean, it was that and country music, but... It was just all day. It was just butt rock. That I, I feel like that's what my middle school playlist was. <laughs> we show up at seven <laughs> o'clock in the morning, get a get get a good layout of, of what we're gonna be doing, set a plan, boom. Boss tells us we can start working. The speaker comes out, stain starts playing. That's when you know that you're you're about to be digging some holes. And I <laughs> dude, they gotta bring in some some butt rock into the league just for Jeez. some fun. Shake things up. Come on, get get rid of Beyonce, get rid of Maroon Five. I mean, spe- get rid speaking of, of shitty music, shit. what's with the fucking shitty fucking music in Medmar right now? <laughs> well, what are, is it all? Is it? It's not just it's holiday not, music. It's, not it's just grocery Christy store music. music it, it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's grocery it's, store music, sh- <laughs> dude. I went into fucking Kroger the other day. The fucking what are the what are the not the, the non QFC one? Oh, the, the Albertsons or whatever. No, Fred the Meyer? Uh, Fred Meyer. No, and they had fucking uh, like rock music playing, like classic rock music. Oh. I heard uh, Dire Straits, uh, Money for Nothing in, in Met Market the other day. And then right after that, they followed that song up with uh, Taylor Swift's Last Christmas. Dude, I don't even understand <sighs> what they're Swift's playing at Met Market. Awful. It's horrible. They, they it's have, really they have bad. Christmas songs that I don't recognize, and then they have normal songs that I can't even recognize as songs. What's that, <laughs> song, what's that song from that from the holiday movie? <clears throat> I'm Mr. Uh, oh, I'm yeah, they're Mr. playing that non fucking song. I like that song, but I'm not Mr. every two minutes. Dude, they play that song from like some weirdo from band. The Year Without a Christmas. Yes, but they play it like some weirdo band. Plays Shout out to it. my mom. That's her favorite Christmas song. And um, they play it. It's like, first off, the song's like seven minutes. <laughs> then they play it. <laughs> They'll play like the whole thing? almost back to back. Jeez. So it'll be that song, then they'll play another song, then another song, and then next thing you know, you're hearing the same song. You're like, oh, I gotta get out of here. Is it? Is you're it? Like is Eric it, Andre, I gotta get out of here. It, does it have Did like spoken word me? parts? Because it's like yeah. a yeah. big part yeah. of the movie. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's like uh, it's, it's like, like the whole scene. If you want, to... it's the whole. Scene. <laughs> they, they just play. But the like band, a skit? yeah, the band, yeah, the band does it word for oh, word. Oh jeez. <laughs> Dude, that's so many times. <laughs> so many, I'm Mister One Hundred Degrees. Yeah, exactly. I'm Mister so Green know. Christmas. All right. I'm Mister Hundred and One. Fucking off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess with that being said. Uh, <laughs> talking about video games, getting back to it. Uh, RDR two, I played a tad bit of it over, Dude, there, fuck you. over my little weekend. I'll probably play a little bit more tomorrow, so I can I'll be more in get a little more insight on that game. I just uh, did the 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 mission where you're you're running back and forth with the Romeo and Juliet type thing with the, the grazing the, the tobacco com- or the yeah. tobacco families. I but like it. I think it's I'm a, almost finished cool, myself. Pretty cool, so enjoyable. Like, well, you're in the epilogue, right? Joe, so yeah. yeah. I'm very far do a behind. Spoiler cast but I'm, if you I'm guys working, ever finish the fucking my way game. Back. And um, I, I played Goat Simulator. Speaking of goats again, I, I played Goat Simulator. For the first Shout out time. to goats. Oh, God, that game is dumb. But, <laughs> That's the whole point. <laughs> yes, that is the point of it. I understand it. So before anybody says. You mean, that game's supposed to be stupid. Or it's supposed you mean to suck. Uh, YouTube videos? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a Switch shooter game. And it's uh, it's pretty pretty funny, but at the same time, I don't know how anybody Played can it. one pay for it or two sit there and spend a lot of time on it. Well, I played a game money, uh, because they put uh, put the footage on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's a streamer game, like Five Minutes at Freddy's. I played a game like that when I first got my PS4. It, this game was so ridiculous. It was called Octodad colon Dadliest Catch, and you <laughs> play <seen> that. <laughs> as an octopus that's supposed to be trying to fit in as a human. So like, and the best part is like you can play it. Co- so it's like the whole idea is it's like uh, I think it's like Goat Simulator. I'm not sure, but like the controls are like impossible to understand. So you're supposed to be doing like everyday tasks like making coffee and you're just like like one stick is one arm and the other stick is the other arm and then you press the shoulder button to move the legs so like it's like impossible to just like move around like i'm trying to pour my daughter milk and i'm like dumping it on her head and just like 
flinging it all around. You can play it co-op where one person controls the arms and one of the legs, or you can do it like right down the middle. So one person's the left side of the octopus <laughs> and one person's <laughs> the right side, and it's as impossible to control as you think it would be. That does sound pretty funny, though. To download and, it, it's uh, fun. B- before we close out and we head out for the night, um, uh, some big title, some big title game discounts. You got uh, Fallout is discounted to about thirty bucks for the blah, holidays. Blah, blah. Still not uh, worth it. Fallout still That's just not on right? my radar. Yeah, yes, yeah. Fallout seventy six still not on my radar. Probably not ever going to be on my radar. Um, and I believe Vito, you said Fallout seventy dicks. <laughs> I believe you said. <laughs> I believe you said. Um, Give the puns to Black me. Black Ops. Black Ops four was thirty bucks as well. So if you guys are interested in a and Battle they just Royale started the mode, like holiday the Christmas uh, special yes. XP special as well. Thank you. The PlayStation Network is having their big holiday sale to week one. Now there's a million things on sale right now. So and I just wore my Call of Duty World War II shirt to work on Thursday. Also, uh, uh, speaking of video games, uh, shout out to Final Fantasy XIV. It's fucking amazing. I started playing it recently. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> and with that being said, you guys, I think, you know, thank you guys for, for stopping in with us and, and, you know, getting getting involved in the show. So Getting beefy. <clears throat> You know, if you guys ever want to join the join our conversations, always hit us up on Facebook. You guys can post. You guys can post funny pictures to us. We'll talk about it. You know, games, anything. Games, movies, entertainment. We got our big end of the year special coming up. We have our Christmas special coming up. Think about this, you guys. Two specials coming out for you guys. Back to back. Back to back. <laughs> that's going to be, you know, probably... Uh, shit, dude. That's going to be a party. With that being said, you guys... I love y'all. I love all the fans. I'm Christian. I am joined here with Vito. See you. And Joe. What up? And I'm going to let Joe close us out with our, you know, our, with our, our plugs. Plug City. Our, 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 we'll call this the um, surge protector because it's full of plugs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Facebook page, that's our primary contact method. That's facebook.com slash beefyboys. Twitter is at beefy underscore boys. Instagram is beefy boys bud with D club. Uh, we are on iTunes. We are on Spotify merch store, cafepress.com slash beefy boys merch one. Yes. I'm- I think that's about it. And yeah, like Christian said, Christmas, or we got a Christmas special. So tell us your stories of Christmas parties gonna ride, best gifts. Smash that on, subscribe button. Thoughts on eggnog? Yes, Keep clicking dude, we'll that be, button. We'll be testing eggnog on the 22nd yeah. for our next episode. And for our end of the year special, go ahead and give us, uh, you know, give us a little, t- you know, a little, a little sneak peek of your guys' top, you know, whatever movies, video games, and albums of the year. So, of, I, you know, 2018 albums, movies, and games. And TV shows if you want. And TV shows. Just whatever. Fucking, Best of, man. Let us know. Holler at us. Join the fun. We are the Beefy Boys Bud Club. We are signing off.